Now, our part one, we dealt with what we call prayer and faith dynamics, where I said that prayer is what produces power, but prayer is not effective without faith. So what makes prayer effective is faith. So prayer, it is to a believer what water is to a fish, meaning our ability to do exploits comes from prayer. But prayer cannot be effective without faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith without works is dead. Faith becomes the ultimate thing. And that was our part one where we were dealing with uh, prayer and faith uh, dynamics. And our part two, we dealt with uh, faith in action, what we call the mountain moving faith. And I did explain that according to the scripture, because this is our scripture reference even today, Mark chapter 11, verses 23, where Jesus said to the disciples, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Now, when you look at the word whosoever, it actually disqualifies people who think they are qualified to speak to mountains. Now, this dimension is a dimension of everybody because whosoever shall say unto this mountain. So for you to speak to your mountains, it has nothing to do with how long you have been in church, how long you have been churching, how long you have been born again. This is not a dimension of pastors. This is not a dimension of apostles. This is not a dimension of bishops, but this is a dimension of everyone with faith. But today, tonight, I want to deal with the last part of the scripture, the last part of the text that we read uh, two weeks ago. I will just quickly go there with you so that we flow together. Now, the book of Mark chapter 11, verses 23. For verily, verily, I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, he opens by saying whosoever, and he closes by saying whatsoever. He opens by saying whosoever. And he closes by saying whatsoever, meaning this dimension of mountain moving faith, which is a dimension of whosoever. It is a dimension that can give you whatsoever, because as long as you have faith in God, you qualify to have whatsoever, but you cannot have whatsoever until you say to the mountain. So our ability now, in our ability to get whatsoever is actually in the amount of faith that we have. But remember, faith on its own, when it matures, it speaks. Meaning we measure or you are able to measure your faith by your confession. Your faith is not just seen, but your faith is heard in what you utter. It is in your utterance where one gets to know the amount of faith that you have. That's why Jesus said, whosoever shall say to this mountain. And notice if you may, he does not say whosoever shall look at this mountain. But he said, whosoever shall say. At the end of the day, it comes down to what you are saying about your mountains. Because in often, uh, in most cases and oftentimes, you talk about your mountains. But today, tonight, we are moving from that dimension to a whole new different dimension altogether where we are going to talk to our mountains. And I dealt with this two weeks ago, but I'm going to go deeper tonight. So we are going to talk to our mountains. You read the book of Habakkuk, you realize that Habakkuk was what I call a prophetic intercessor. He did not talk to the people about God. His duty was to, to talk to God about the people. Now, you have been talking about your problems 
to God. But tonight we are not going to talk to God about our problems, but we are going to talk to our mountains about our God. Because everybody listening to me right now, you have an ability, you have the power, and the power does not come from the church that you attend, but the power that you have comes from God, you having faith in God. Remember, as a matter of fact, in the beginning of time, where it all began in the origin of time, when God said, let us make men in our own image. Now, after our likeness, to operate the word likeness there, it means to look exactly like, to operate exactly like, to function exactly like. And how does God function? How does God operate? How does God work? God operates in speaking. He is a God who speaks. In Genesis chapter 1 verses 2, we are told that after he created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless, void, and darkness covered the surface of the deep. And what did God do? And the Bible says, and God said. Meaning one of the ways or one of the things that shows that we are unapologetic about who we are and we know who we are in God is in the ability, is in us speaking. Ooh, glory be to God. So at the end of the day, what I'm saying to you, family, what I'm saying to you, friends, partners, members of New Life, uh, and followers of New Life all over the world, it comes back to what you say. It is not about how long you have been in church. It is not about how long you have been complaining about this situation. But it comes back to what you are saying to the situation. Now, notice this. Every time, or rather, in, in, in most cases, uh, we have plans. And we pray about them, just like when the year began, you know, um, some people plan for uh, uh, a month, some plan for the year, some plan for five years. It doesn't matter, but everybody has a plan. But now the devil, the enemy has this tendency in him of rearranging not only the plans that you have, but the plans that God has concerning your life. Then it becomes your personal responsibility to command order in certain areas of your life. Let me repeat what I just said because I just confused myself right there as well. You have plans as much as God has plans concerning your life. Meaning there is a purpose concerning your life. And you yourself, you are trying to figure out what's going on around you in most cases. The enemy, the devil, has a tendency of rearranging that so that you lose and you miss the purpose that God has for you. Let's say you are working. And all of a sudden you are happy in God. All of a sudden you are excited about your life and you lose the job. You lose your money. You lose your education. You lose a business deal. You lose your relationship. You lose your marriage. And automatically that rearranges everything concerning your life. But I want to assure you that it is now your personal responsibility as a believer, as a Christian, as a child of God, to command order in those areas of your life. Remember, Revelations 1 uh, 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 declares, uh, uh, verse 6 uh, declares that ye are priests and ye are what? Ye are kings. And where there is a command of a king, there is power. The Bible says where the word of a king is, there is power. And remember, closed mouth is closed destiny. Closed mouth equals to closed destiny. So when it comes to the things of God, it's all in what you are saying. It comes back to what you are saying. I know they have said something about you. I know your own mother said something about you. I know your own family are looking down on you. They don't know who you are, 
but the Lord knows. They don't know where you are going, but the Lord knows. They don't know who you will be, but the Lord knows. They don't know what you can do, but the Lord knows. It is not about them. It's about what God said about you in his word. And you, unapologetically so, standing in that word, declaring it and decreeing it in your own life. Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to God, there are things that God himself will not do for you because he has given you power to do for yourself. And notice if you may, Jesus says to the disciples, back to the scripture, Mark 11 verse 23, whosoever shall say unto the mountain, Good God, whosoever shall say to this stronghold, whosoever shall say to this problem, whosoever. You see, I said it last of last week and I'm going to say it again. It's illogical for one to think, do I have to speak to my mountains? When you look at it with the eye of the flesh, it does not make sense. But once you tap in the dimension of faith, now you begin to understand that we believe and we know by faith that the world that I've seen or the world that we see today came out of the unseen. Now faith will say to you, the mountain that you see, the problem that you see, good God, I wish somebody will catch this. The mountain that you see, the problem that you see, uh, uh, it came from the unseen world. Mm. Meaning you can reverse it back to where it comes from. Because the mountain that you see, God spoke it into existence. It was not, but God had to speak it and it came to be. So the same mountain, you can speak to it. And it can listen to you. Good God. So wherever you are, I want us to enter into agreement. I'm getting excited. I know I might be <laughs> all over and you're wondering what's happening to the apostle. Is because I'm getting excited and I'm trying to cover everything as much as I'm trying to cover as much as I can and everything at once. So I want you wherever you are to lift up your right hand. Why? We are entering into agreement. Some of you right now, you're listening to me. You are about to lose your job. You are about to lose your marriage. You are about to lose your relationship. Some of you have been trusting God for employment. Some of you have been trusting God for financial breakthrough. Things are hard and it looks like whatever you touch does not come together. But I double dare you today. I double dare you tonight to speak to your mountain. I challenge you tonight to speak to your problem. I challenge you tonight to speak to your stronghold, to speak to your situation. And I did not say to speak about it, but I said to speak to it because you have the ability, you have the power. So I want us to come into agreement by lifting up your right hand. And this is what I want you to catch here. Good God, I'm getting excited. Holy Ghost, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The book of Isaiah uh, 54, 17 declares, uh, oh, good God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No weapon, good God, formed against you shall prosper. Now watch this. I know you know the scripture. You have been confessing the scripture, but I want us to deal with the pretext of of the text, not just the context and what we say about the scripture and where we confess it because we are in trouble. No, 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 no. But I want to show you the power of this scripture. It says, no weapon formed against you that shall prosper. And every tongue, listen to that now, that shall rise against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Good God. It does not say God shall condemn. This is our heritage. Oh God. Oh my goodness. This is the heritage of the servant of God. This is our heritage. Now every tongue that rises, I don't expect God and I sit in the corner to condemn. It is my personal responsibility to reverse things that are spoken against my life because words are power. Words are powerful. Words create. Words construct. So sometimes you walk in a certain, uh, uh, you find yourself in a certain season where you don't understand Understand if you are coming or you are going or you are stagnant, you don't understand what's going. Is uh, what's going on in your life? Is because somebody will have. 
spoken that season in your life. But it is your duty now. It is your responsibility now as a child of God to condemn those words. My goodness. To command order in your own life. If you are in a position or you are in a point where you don't know what's going on. Where you feel like you don't have direction. It is your personal responsibility. I did not say it's for your pastor. I did not say it's for your prayer partners. But I said it's your personal responsibility to speak order, to command order, to declare order in your own life. So with your right hand up, we are coming into agreement. We bind ourselves together today. I feel something here. I feel something here. Father, in the name of Jesus, and I want you wherever you are to just say that is so. That is so is more of amen. We are agreeing. We are God's army. We are God's army. We are agreeing now. Father, in the name of Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, we arise this evening. With, with one spirit, one mind, and one accord to establish our legal rights over every region and over every territory to say no plan of the enemy functioned against our lives. No word spoken against our lives shall take shape and shall prevail. In the name of Jesus, we reverse every plan of the enemy. I declare and I decree upon everybody under the influence of my voice that their plans and the expectations of the enemy concerning your life, they've been turned upside down. You are protected in the name of Jesus from the wickedness of man. You are protected in your going in. You are protected in the name of Jesus in your going out. God shall stand tall through you. God shall rise through you. In any situation right now that is standing between you and the purpose of God, I speak to that situation. I speak to that mountain. I speak to that stronghold. I speak to that challenge. I say you situation, you mountain, be thou removed in the name of Jesus. And if you are swimming in the pool of confusion, I declare and I decree, peace be still. Let there be peace in your life. Peace of mind. Peace in your family. Peace at your workplace. Peace in your finances. Let there be peace in your marriage. And remember, peace does not necessarily mean absence of trouble absence of challenges, but it means serenity in the midst of troubles. And I declare serenity in your life. In the name of Jesus, you are a child of God and you are more than a conqueror. Everything that has to do with your life is from the victory point because every child born of God overcometh the world. So you are more than a conqueror. As you declare now, begin to declare, begin to declare, begin to declare. As you declare now, as you decree now, as you speak now, as you begin to confess, guess what? The Bible says in the book of Job, it shall be established. Why? Because he is faithful. He that did what? promised. So God is faithful. He's not a man so that he can lie. He does not repent from his word. So I want you wherever you are because I might not know your challenges. I might not know your problems. Whether you are sick in your body, I want you to speak things that are not good. God, as though they are. The doctor gave you a report and said, this is your problem. And we know that's your problem. But right now, I want you to enter in a dimension of faith where you speak Speak things that are not as though they are. Begin to walk around if you can. Declare that you are healed. Declare that good health is yours. Declare that you are walking in divine health. Not in divine healing, but walking in divine health. Not healing. Divine health is yours. Divine health is yours. Promotion is mine. Increase is mine. I'm protected by God. Come on. Begin to declare. Begin to declare. As you declare, guess what? There is what we call a reversal of any word spoken against your life because your word now will have power over the word of the enemy. 
I do not care who said you won't make it. I do not care who said you won't mount up to anything. When Jesus says yes, no man can say no. When God opens the door, umu Jehovah ageko ongaval. So wherever you are right now, with faith and boldness, don't approach the throne of God apologetic. Don't give the devil something to shout about. Approach the throne of God with boldness. That's what the Bible declares. And begin to speak things into existence. Begin to declare. As you declare, you shall have whatsoever. Hallelujah, 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 glory, 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 declare glory, 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 glory. It is done in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Mara, ba, 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 ba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ay, 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 Christ in us, the hope of glory. In him we walk. In him we live. In him we have our being. That's where our authority comes from. That's where our power comes from. That's where our boldness comes from. Our boldness does not come from ourselves. But the boldness that we have comes from him. For the Bible declares, the Russia shall be bold as lions. Yet the wicked, they run, yet nobody's chasing them. So our boldness comes from him because we are the righteousness of God in Christ. So the righteousness part of us being righteous comes from him. Hallelujah. I know you have been blessed. I've been blessed too. 